and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the tiger stripes and weighs in at 188 pounds also. His professional record, a perfect one. 21 bouts, 21 victories, 19 knockouts to his credit. By way of Kazakhstan, he's fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undefeated IBF cruiserweight champion of the world, Vasily the Tiger Giro. I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm questioning again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck. Giroff says that in a couple of years he'll be a heavyweight. First, he has to get through fighters like Brown, experienced boxer, comes from a family of fighters. Brother was a fighter. Mother and dad have coached fighters. His grandfather's fought. He should know something about what it's like in the ring. Jiroff is a little bit of a slow starter. He tends to start off the first couple of rounds fighting upright in that classic, definable European style and working behind his jab. Then usually, once he's warmed up, he begins to lower down, go to the body. It's a little unconventional. He likes to come low and wide, but he's so effective, particularly with right hook to the body, that it damages most opponents. Brown has upper body movement, wants to work behind the jab. Most of all, wants to keep his feet moving to neutralize Giroff's body attack. And Giroff has got to get in front of a crowd like this with the media all assembled and do something dramatic for a knockout. Get in the heavyweight scene. Because Brown, if he only outboxes him and land more jabs, he's on the scene. Giroff sees himself as a potential 210 to 215 pound heavyweight you like heavyweights that size, George. Oh, yeah, I think they're excellent for the sport. They got the better coordination. Everything is better for them. You can get to be a little too big for a heavyweight. Holy. Boxing. Is that true, George? I think so. I think the finest heavyweight we've ever seen were 195. Even Mike Tyson was so explosive at about 200, what, 14? What about George Foreman? Yeah, I started to say this from a man who's fought some very significant fights at over 250 pounds. <laughs> Haven't you, George? <laughs> oh, what a good body shot. Left hand to the body by Giroff. He does it with both hands. I like the right hook, but he can dig for, from either side to your ribcage. Dale Brown with a right hand lead up top. And Brown lands the left hand as Giroff comes in. If there's a weakness in Giroff's game, it's his defense. He will take punches to get inside. And Brown should just stand there and just let his punches go. Don't try to put any power because Giroff is coming right into everything you throw. You don't need to be accurate. Just let him go. Well, just as you were saying that, George, Giroff walked into a straight right hand. Well, if you grew up in Kazakhstan and, and you knew what it was like in Scottsdale, Arizona, you might say to yourself, gosh, I'd love to live in Scottsdale someday. Giroff has realized that dream and says that he will become an American citizen and live the rest of his life in the United States. I'd like to live in Scottsdale. <laughs> George, you can live anywhere you want. I got news for you. Well, I couldn't get good barbecue like in Texas, huh? Well... Now, I'm Brown sure you should get just... Texas barbecue in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Brown, if he just keep his hands up and just let them go out without any turning up the body, just let them fly. He'll do a lot better than trying to load up. He's doing a good job. We're getting hit way too much. He threw that hook at you. We knew he was going to throw it. Now, you're throwing one jab instead of two jabs. You did just what they thought you were going to do that round. How you feeling? You hurt your anything? Okay, well you can't stand there and take him. You understand? Okay. You, need to, you either need to get your hands up and jab over the top of him. What landed? The left uppercut landed and the rammer landed. Why don't we shoot them a whole round? The left uppercut and the rammer. And you can't leave your head there. He's finding you with that right hand. Let's get to work, man. You have to move, move. An explosion. Combination for punches, explosion, and then behind him, middle of the ring. 
Okay. Both sides. Okay. No free okay. shot. And in between, stick the jab. Stick the jab. Stick the jab. You heard the instructions in uh, Brown's corner. Move, move, and then explode. And then move again. And you heard the disappointment from Giroff's trainer, Scott Adry. He said, well, you did everything they expected you to do. Now let's see if you can do something better. Brown keeps his hands up real good. Moves out of position. His Straight right hand back, is right back. next to his chin. And you see Giroff trying to throw the uppercut that Adry asked for. The uppercut and the rammer. The rammer is bound to be the body punch. Hard left hand up top by Brown as Giroff comes in. Right now, Dale Brown's boxing skills creating a puzzle for Giroff to solve. You're right, Jim. Uh, the first time I've seen him where he's sort of backing up and trying Lindo, Lindo. to think his way through this. Yeah, he yeah. looks hesitant. And that's what you don't want from an opponent, like uh, a fighter like Giroff. You want him to just attack and attack. Let him learn how to fight on his own. You spend time in the gym with a trainer teaching you how to box. The next thing you know, you can't even do anything. Right hand counter by Brown as Giroff leans in, looking to get to Brown's body. One, two combination, right, Shop, left. Chopping right Giroff. hand up top by Giroff. Yep. And an uppercut. Right uppercut. The Russian Tiger says that he is a lover of art and music. Has a lot of pastimes and hobbies outside the ring. To say nothing of a degree in ecology. Former member of the Red Army. Outstanding boxer at the 96 Olympics, as we mentioned. We're looking a little puzzled here. Giroff says he took up boxing at age 12 because it was a man's sport. Well, things have changed since then. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know about Mia St. John. Brown is getting effective with a short right hand to the chest and eventually will touch the chin. Giroff starting to land a little more consistently to Brown's body. And Brown, as the result, just a tiny bit more hesitant himself than was the case in the early part of round two. Brown has taken the fight to Giroff now. Giroff jabbing twice to the body. Brown with a counter right upstairs to end the round. Still to come, and the very next bout on the card. Five years of anticipation will culminate as Oscar De La Hoya takes the ring against Felix Trinidad. What more can you ask of the 147-pound world champion, criticized as recently as a year ago for being too protected by his promoter? De La Hoya chooses in the same year to fight his two most formidable potential opponents, Ike Quarte and Felix Trinidad, separated only by another difficult matchup against Obakar. Give him credit. Absolutely, Jim. You know, if it was up to the businessmen, they would just let the golden goose keep laying golden eggs against the likes of Patrick Car Charpentier. But he wanted to prove himself. He took more time than many of us thought he should have taken before he went up until the top level of the game. But but he has stepped forward. Well, and at the end of the day, Larry, as you pointed out, in other media, it was the fighter himself who stepped up and said, I want the best fights, get them for me. Whenever you've seen top fighters begin to be their manager and matchmakers, that's always the signal to the downfall. Lord Patterson needn't fight Sonny Liston. I needn't match myself with Muhammad Ali. Ali. But on the other hand, George, if you're going to get over 20 million dollars for it and you go down that's a pretty good price <laughs>
Well, as you get older, you think business is better. Giroff starting to land his left hand to the bike. Takes a right hand from Brown as he comes in. Now Brown pins Giroff against the ropes and lands a one-two. To the body and to the head. And he moves back and forward once he does as much. So he's giving Giroff a lot of good looks, changing them every now and then. Giroff is throwing a looping, kind of lazy punches here. I'm not sure why. Uh, having a difficult time lining up Brown, who has good movement. It's like he doesn't know anything about Brown at all. No film or anything. Yeah, Brown, much less acclaimed than the man from whom Giroff took the title, Arthur Williams, is is posing many more problems so far for Giroff than did Williams when Giroff lifted the title June 5 in Biloxi. Brown keeps his right hand next to his chin and in position to throw it whenever he causes Giroff to miss. Takes a hard left hand to the body from Giroff. Brown, to my eyes, incidentally, a near-dead ringer for the Australian actor Russell Crowe, star of L.A. Confidential. Even has the same haircut. When you got a guy who's aggressive to you, trying to knock you out, hit him in the body to make him start thinking about himself. And that's what Brown is doing. Good straight hand by Brown. And Giroff is just moving back and forward as though he doesn't know what style of fighter he's fighting. Giroff landed a right uppercut that snapped Brown's head back a little bit. Brown coming back with a left hook. It's not in Brown's interest to start mixing it up at this point. Yeah, but when fighters get hit, they want to hit back. Yeah. You want to save that for the latter round. Take a lot of juice out of Giroff. And then open up later on. Later on. And as they go to their corners, let's look back at yesterday's weigh-in. A tumultuous scene. More than 7,000 people in one end of this arena. Raucous support for both fighters as they took the scales. First Trinidad weighing in at 147 after he and his dad protested for 10 minutes that the scale had been substituted from the one that had been there earlier in the day. And then a smiling De La Hoya weighing in to the adoring glee of his fans also at 147. Cedric Kushner, uh, the fight promoter, who used to be a rock promoter, came out of that way and saying, Oscar De La Hoya is the nearest thing I've seen to Mick Jagger. All right, I need them all. I need the quick three. Let's go to work, baby. Yeah, but Jagger's a lightweight. Not in his field. Through round three by CompuBox numbers, Giroff landing 51 of 166, Brown 49 of 144, Brown with an edge in power shots, pretty much an even fight, to our eyes at least, through the first three. Let's see if Harold Letterman agrees. Jim, Jim I absolutely agree. I have it two rounds to one, Dale Brown. Yeah, it's one of these fights that you can fight a phone move. Two guys standing in the middle of the ring throwing power shots. It's tremendous. Dale Brown seems to me to be getting in a few more cleaner, harder shots. I gave him rounds two and three. I thought he was fooled by Giro's fight, a uh, style at the start of the fight, but I think he's, he picked it up in the second and third. Very close. It is close, but Giro seems to be the more aggressive fighter. He, he is rolling through. His ambition just pours out of him, just like the sweat. He's making the effort. And if the fight goes along like this, he probably will get the benefit of the doubt in most close rounds. He works and works and works and gets into his game as the fight goes on. But still, Brown is neutralizing the expected Giroff body attack with careful footwork, good lead jab work, and effective counterpunching. A good professional fighter, Brown. Larry said it best. You can just feel the energy of Giroff starting to just pile up pile up and come forward. His desire. No better say. Pull your arm back. Pull it back. Get him up there. Pull that body. Pull that body. 
There's a red puffy area under the right eye of Jira. He has prominent cheekbones and may well turn out to be a guy who cuts as his career goes on. It hasn't been a problem for him so far. 21 and 0 as a pro. Brown was able to get in some good body shots in the earlier round. That may help him as the fight lingers on also. Takes away a lot of the power from Jiro. Good right hand by Brown. Right. Brown just steps back a little and throws his right hand without even looking at what he's doing. Knowing that Giroff is going to be there. Like a little head button has occurred. The holy. Giroff is starting to smell blood because he see blood. Just keeps coming forward. A little bit of a cut on the brow of Brown. Just above the left eye. No holding. Time. You got an accidental butt. Watch your head. Accidental butt. What's the accidental butt? Accidental and we get butt. another live look in the dressing room at Felix Trinidad, wherein oh. there's a split screen there, and on the left side, San Juan, Puerto Rico where fans have gathered to watch the bout one of the thousands of locations on that island where people will be jammed together tonight among the many special promotions in puerto rico where candidates in next month's gubernatorial election are giving away seats at gatherings to watch the fight trying to build support prisoners in various prisons on the island are being given a chance to watch the fight as a reward for good behavior and I'll bet you there was some very good behavior in Puerto Rico's prisons the last few weeks. It'd probably be a good idea for Trinidad to win the fight to maintain that good behavior. The referee announced that was an accidental headbutt in the fight. So it's an accidental headbutt that caused the cut above the eye. It's not a big one and not at this moment bleeding in such a way as to damages Brown or damage Brown's competitive effort. <laughs> Round five, final preliminary bout of the evening. Kazakhstan's cruiserweight champion, Vasily Jirov, becoming an American, living in Scottsdale, Arizona, and fighting here against Calgary's Dale Brown. Now, Brown should still hit on points at this point in case the fight is stopped, huh? Well, we're in the fifth. I would think this is the time to bring it on. Brown mixing it up, moves backward, moves to the side, occasionally steps forward and fires a lead right hand. And Jiroff, not yet able to solve the puzzle enough to consistently mount his trademark body attack. What Brown has got to do every time Jiroff moves his hand, Use his left jab. No holding. Every time he moves his right hand, throw your left jab. Right. Stop it. Never mind if you Never miss or not. Just keep it out there. Good body shot by Brown. Zirov simply trying to impose his will on Brown. He was, good job. he was not as strong. And there it goes. Zirov begins to impose his will. Body. Upstairs. Back to the body. Brown with a good left hook coming off the ropes. That was one of the first times in the fight that Vasily Zirov was able to set up and land three or four straight body shots. And that is his stock in trade. 
Sometimes it doesn't discourage you if you're out. You get hit with a shot, but it's not because the guy wanted to. You walked right into it. Shale Brown holding his own, trading shot for shot for Giro. But that is not the kind of fight that Brown wants to be in with the Russian Tiger. And he oh, seems hurting. hurt. Well, more accurately, he's hurting. Simply the accumulation. And he goes down and takes a knee in the face of the Three, sustained Giroff punishment. Five, six, seven, eight. Come on, you ready? Giroff looks like some kind of a farm machine just mowing through the field. Hey, you got a box, man. Come on. You gave him that. You gave him that. You stayed in the corner. That. That's why you have legs. You have to move on that. You're Come doing on. good on Gunter. You hit him. But it's oh, not enough. Got to show that gives him heart. You take, you take moving. Here we see Brown just from an accumulation of punches and pressure finally yielding and taking a knee. And the from 90210, Strength and will overcoming skill. In a scintillating round five rally, Vasily Giroff by punch stat numbers landed 36 out of 73 blows, 30 of 51 power shots. He limited Dale Brown to 10 of 50 in that round. So Giroff has begun to separate himself from the competition as we go to the sixth of a scheduled 12. Giroff defending his version of the Cruiserweight World Championship. Brown has got to bring the fight back to the middle of the ring and, and fight, keep the fight in the middle of the ring. Don't go back into the ropes at all. And it's going to take an act of will to do it at this point. It's about footwork. Make sure your every foot, your left foot, is pointed toward the middle of the ring. Well, and you heard the, the men in Brown's corner, trainer Stefan LaRouche, saying, you've got feet, use them. Feet, do your stuff. He's Come trying. On, feet, don't fail me now. <laughs> Step and fetch it. He's trying, back up on his toes for the first minute of this round. It's an easier fight when Brown is in the middle of the ring. <laughs> and forcing Giroff to go back to boxing. Giroff's right hand by Brown. Giroff wants this fight, this fighter to be close to the ropes. That's when he drops his guard and move out. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely, he wants to take Brown to the ropes. When he gets this man to the ropes, he does square his shoulders up, and he drops down and fires low and wide to the body. He's tough to deal with. And he's not a boxer. He hates the middle of the ring. You keep a puncher out in the middle and box him. See, he loads up when he sees Brown ready to go to the, to the rope. Giroff does. Hard right hand by Giroff. Brown was momentarily hurt by that one. And another hard right hand to the top of the head. That hurt. If he had been in the ring on, that, on the ropes at that time, he would have finished him. Giroff would have. Brown Stay was able away to move away. from the rings. For the rope. Problem is that in using his feet and concentrating on staying in the middle of the ring and staying away, Brown just isn't hunting enough in this round. And Kirov is able to pile up points as he lands even while fighting in a scenario that's not as comfortable for him. Good left hand by Kirov. When he's in the middle, Kirov will land one good shot here and there. But when he, when he falls to the rope, he goes for five, six. Nice combination by Brown. Giroff wades right through it. Well, you got a maximum of six more rounds of this to wait through before you get to see the main event. Another visit to the dressing room of Oscar De La Hoya, and you can see that the golden boy is beginning to break the obligatory sweat as he warms up. Still to come tonight, Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Trinidad for welterweight supremacy in boxing.
fans. We pulled 500 fans coming through the door at random and asked those 500 fans something about who they're rooting for. But first, let's look at this. Too close to call. Some of the parallels between Oscar Deloy and Felix Trinidad. Very little difference in age. They're less than three months apart. Little difference in record. Virtually identical knockout percentage. Virtually identical number of championship rounds. Virtually identical results against their three common opponents. You know, and I just checked a few moments ago with one of the leading odds makers here in Las Vegas, Art Man Terrace. He told me the fight is still an even money proposition. Still seven to one for a draw. And we pulled 500 fans coming through the door asking them for whom would they root in the arena tonight? Now, everybody sees this as a Deloia home court, but perhaps surprisingly, among the 500 fans we polled, 281 said they would be rooting for Oscar. 219 said they would be rooting for Trinidad. Not that huge a margin for Deloia. Of course, Larry, you make the point that it isn't always that they're pulling with their hearts. They're pulling with their wallets. And if there's an evenly divided opinion on the fight it means that in this arena there are a lot of people who think that trinidad is going to win and or they you, want him to win and you're doggone right they're going to be rooting for him if they bet on him straight left hand lands for jeer off harold letterman how do you have the russian tiger doing through six you know jim just like he always does he turned it on to the fourth i thought he went rounds four five and six with that right hook he's got a tremendous right hand to the south floor. he just seems to be walking right through vasily jeer off 58, 55, four rounds to two, Vasily Jirov. But Jim, take note of the uh, footing. Terrible traction in there. Both guys slipping, slipping, slipping. It's very rough to get to get set to throw a hard shot. And as they're slipping, they're sweating. So uh, I'm sure they'll try to wipe down the ring before De La Oye and Trinidad make it in, but particularly the painted sign areas could well be slippery. Midway through round seven, cruiserweight titleist Vasily Jirov defending against Canadian Dale Brown. I'm just not sure he could do enough damage in the heavyweight division, George. I love him as a cruiserweight, but I'm not sure he has a big enough punch to keep the big heavyweights off of him. That's right. You get a, a good left jab in his face all night, it can change your thing. And that's what you'll find in the heavyweight. Guys with great, stiff left jab. Oh, but he has power when he decides to go to the battle. He, he's a strong puncher. He doesn't really snap his punches. He's just a... A real force, he knows how to fight. He's eager to do well, hard to beat. But I sort of agree with Jim that uh, he's about where he should be. He might be able to make some money someday by stepping up and fight a heavyweight, but I don't think he can make a career up there. His other big idea for making money is to tempt Roy Jones into a fight at the cruiserweight weight limit. Oh, he's a tough fight. Roy Jones is the quickest thing I've seen. <laughs> Roy, who at one point fought four consecutive southpaws, he's grinded his teeth, or ground his teeth several times over the notion of having to fight so many southpaws, but he's stuck to his knitting and done it. Mandatory challenge here, mandatory challenge there. Unification bout against Reggie Johnson. Southpaw, 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 southpaw. Now here's another one who wants to fight him. Just that you're not busy enough. Not busy enough. Short your punch, short all your, your punches. Even if no, don't try to reach with your right, but you don't touch him then. Come back right with the hook and the right again after. Just let it. Oh, you understand me? You're the best fighter in the world. Now you ought to do is go out here and do it. Can you do that for me the rest of the rounds? I need you to go out here and you go to work. Every round. Beginning of round eight of a scheduled 12. Vasily Jirov on the left of your screen in black trunks. <coughs> Dale Brown on the right of your screen in black trunks. Brown is so much better when he just stands his ground and let his fist fly, flow. Go with the flow and take the power off of him. Jirov dabbles in art. 
and body punches. Good round with a counter left hook there Whoa. and a straight right hand. Two most effective punches in three rounds for Dale Brown. Jeroff's pretty much walking through his punches. In addition to all of his other good qualities, Jeroff appears to have an exemplary chin. Uh, Brown is making his last stand here. He knows he has to start turning it around. And he Jeroff's doesn't... just creeping in and good right hand. Good right, right hand. Right hand stunned him. He's Brown is in control and doesn't know it. And now Kirov backs off from another Brown right hand. Good left hook by Brown. They're trading and hurting each other at this point. Brown seems to have gotten some energy from seeing Kirov hurt and backing away. But here sizzling. comes Kirov again. Yep. It was a sizzling left hook to the body by Brown. I think Kirov's been wobbled a couple times here, but Brown's been wobbled too. This fight is playing right into Jirov's hand. Because whenever Brown hurts him, he backs him to the ropes again. This is where Jirov gets his energy. I don't know. If this is helping Jirov, I wonder what would hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he looks forward to. Every time he's in a boxing match, develops in the same fashion. Turns into a war. But so far, Brown is winning this war, and it looks like there's an abrasion along the side of the right eye now of uh, Giroff. Good right left to the body by Giroff. That hurt Brown. Well, they both had some moments in this round. Punch combination by Giroff drives Brown back and off of him. Brown stops now. He's fouled. Gorgeous clear nights in Las Vegas. A look at the new faux Eiffel Tower in front of the new Paris Hotel across the street from the fabulous Bellagio. We are down the strip from there at the spectacular Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino, which incidentally also has a Four Seasons Hotel enclosed within the structure. Jim, they're celebrating Paris here, Rome, Venice, New York. You think that if Trinidad wins, they'll have to build a San Juan hotel in Las Vegas? He can build it himself. <laughs> He'll have plenty of money. And here's the Mandalay Bay. We are at the south end of the Strip. And the ride from here to the far north end is quite a trip. Michael Buffer taking advantage of the opportunity to introduce some of the celebrities between rounds of this fight because there are so many of them here. He would never have a chance to introduce them all if he simply waited and tried to do it between fights. Brown wins that round on the Letterman card and narrows the score once again. They combined in round eight by copy box numbers to land 61 of 109 power shots. It was a leather festival. Whenever Brown is on his station, left foot forward, right foot in position, he's able to do whatever he wants. He picks him up and moves around a little bit. Giroff takes off on him. I've never heard you use that term, station. George, yeah. amplify that. Oh, it's just like a chair. You, wrap, you lean on the chair, back and forward, you're getting off the station. You want to stay right there, stabilize. Left foot forward, right foot in position to spin your right hand. So is there such a thing as a station-to-station -station fighter? Oh, there are a lot of them around. Oscar, whenever he makes up his mind to stop bouncing, he's probably one of the best station fighters in the business. Hmm. Interesting term. Not to mention his opponent tonight. Or does he keep one foot down ready for power? Oscar's, Trinidad. Oscar's people believe, George, 
as we watch more of the same in sheer off brown oscar's people believe that trinidad is not a great fighter from the waist down that his legs are too stiff and he doesn't move well in the ring your thought <laughs> that's just not so would you be a little clearer, George? <laughs> <laughs> I think we Trinidad, Trinidad is a complete package of welterweight fighter. No doubt about it. If you whip him, the better man won. That's all there is to it. Not right. because he is an excellent, in excellent shape and well prepared. Trinidad's people say that Oscar is a one-handed fighter and that his right hand is all but meaningless as a weapon in there. Your take? Oscar, you stand and bob and weave and don't move your head some, you'll see combinations like you've never seen before. One, two, three, four, five. He's the best at that. Combination shots. Well, remember Riddick Poe was a one-handed puncher too. Remember? Left-handed puncher. You can go a long way if you've got a great left hand. <laughs> he had a long one too. <laughs> Giroff is the counter puncher now, backing away. Yeah, it's kind of an odd fight for Giroff at this point. This is not the way he anticipates it being in the ninth round. He still seems in control, but Dale Brown has been able to make Giroff box through the ninth round. Now, as we reach the end of the ninth, let's slip away to Puerto Rico, where again our reporter is Ricardo Salis. Ricardo. Thank you, Jim. As you know, all that fighters tonight they're going to be throwing left and right to their opponent well here in san juan de puerto rico the fans are searching left and right to a place where to watch the fight As a, let's roll the tape that we start having this afternoon the government they spent seventy two thousand dollars to install 16 white screen monitors outside city hall for eight thousand low-income families so they can watch this fight for free of course, they're gonna have extra security for all these venues. And as you mentioned before, even the inmates, males and females, they're gonna be watching this fight for free, thanks to the government. <laughs> now let's go back to you, Jim. All right, thank you very much, Ricardo Salis. Well, if they ever ban boxing here in uh, <laughs> mainland United States of America, Larry, we can rest assured we'll have an audience waiting for us in Puerto Rico. It's great to see all this interest and passion in a prize fight sometimes i think it means almost too much to some people but how can you complain harold how do you have it through nine i gotta tell you very strange tail brown in rounds eight and nine started to back Giro up Giro started running away almost like he was doing now back it up i thought dale brown pulled out rounds eight and nine with effective aggressiveness five rounds to four 86 84 Vasily Jirov he's got that one big point edge because of the knockdown but this one's a barn burner Dale Brown moving forward back in the champion up it's a very even fight by CompuBox numbers getting closer on Harold Letterman's card as we get into the championship rounds here's a note on on the business of boxing as some people conduct it Brown had an opportunity to fight Fabrice Tiozza, who also owns one of the cruiserweight belts. He was offered the fight by Tiozza's promoter, Don King, only this on this condition, that, that Brown would have to fight for King for the next three years, win or lose. Brown declined, and here he is getting another chance. I hope that's not true. I right. hope so. Oh, I assure you it's true. <laughs> what makes you think it wouldn't be true? This is boxing, George. That, that, that sounds terrible. It really sounds bad. Well, hey, you know, it didn't happen because the fighter had the guts to say, I'll wait for another opportunity, and good for him. I would have to, I would have to hear that from Don King himself. That would be hard for me to believe. You know... Giroff is more dangerous with his head, buddy, than anything else. And that's, that's the only thing that's keeping Brown a little bit reluctant because when he goes forward a little bit, Giroff hits him with his head. Could be because of the southpaw stands, but he, that head is dangerous of Giroff. Yeah. Head butting, a dangerous element of the sport, constantly needs to be examined by the medical and procedural authorities in boxing, head butting may have had much to do with the demise of a fighter named Randall Carver earlier this week. Giroff 
Doesn't quite look like a tiger here anymore, but he does seem to be winning the fight. He's very, very stubborn, very driven, and he's fighting a very game and well-schooled opponent. Hard shot to the body, and Brown goes down. I think Four, Brown might have thought it was five, a low blow. Six, Richard Steele seven, ruling it an official eight, knockdown, and Brown nine, is in serious distress out. and is not going to make it. Giroff gets a body shot knockout in the 10th round. Well, if he was going to get a knockout, that's the way he does it. He knocked out Williams with a body shot, too. No. He commits to the ribcage wallop, and that one may have gotten Brown in the area below the solar plexus. You see Dr. Flip Homansky examining Brown there. I'd like to see just where that punch landed, and we'll get a look at it in a moment. Well, it was pretty close. Let's take a look. Ooh, legal. No, that's one of those Roy Jones shots. Legal. Right in the side. Clean, Absolutely legal. Clean punch. Yep. Clean punch. Clean knockout by one of the real rising Ooh. body punching stars in the sport, Vasily Giroff. Puts you in mind of Felix Trinidad's last fight coming into tonight when he knocked out Hugo Pineda with a perfect body shot in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Or how about Roy Jones knocking out Virgil Hill and with that, the right hand of the body? Started the whole year. thing. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the particulars on Giroff's KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at two minutes fifty-two seconds of the tenth round, as the referee calls a halt to the contest. The winner by TKO and still undefeated, still the IBF cruiserweight champion of the world, Vasily the Tiger Giro. That's the last body shot you'll see before De La Hoya Trinidad. Let's go back up to JB. All right, Jim, thank you very much. And indeed, as we have been talking about his powerful body shots, in fact, it did come in handy. It took a while. As a matter of fact, Giroff had been asking for our colleague, Roy Jones, saying that he wanted him in the worst way. I think he's going to need a few more fights with uh, some polished fighters before asking for Roy Jones. All right. As Jim mentioned, upcoming next, it will be the main event just moments away. The unification bout between Oscar De La Hoya and Felix Trinidad. You've heard us talk all evening long. Trinidad says he has only one game plan. Oscar will be knocked out in six rounds. And we will find out if that will be the case coming up in just a bit. Right now, let's check in with Nick Charles. Well, J.B., an interesting uh, scenario unfolding behind the scenes in the locker room. The De La Hoya camp wanted to make sure that referee Mitch Halpern is very aware and on the lookout for low blows or any roughhousing from Trinidad. He's got a history of being that way a little bit. In fact, Joe